children of the night. This video, however, is on my experiences with the Galactic Federation of Light. Definitely not an expert. Because I used to work for them. <laughs> wow, you're so dominant. It's true. It's true. I used to work for them. Unconsciously, though. Unconsciously. And that's going to make more sense in a second. But first, I want to discuss who they are. The Galactic Federation of Light are a group of extraterrestrial beings that survey and interact with individuals on Earth. <laughs> Their primary mode of function is to abduct you in the middle of your sleep. Take you to their ship and then to interrogate you. Nicely though, gently. There's so many explanations out there for this kind of stuff. But they managed to get you on board through hypnosis and specific strategic tactics. What? My story is that ever since I was a child, I was taken from my room and I was put in front of a group of extraterrestrials and interrogated for years, like for a very long time. And the way that these abductions would generally happen is that I'd be sleeping and in the middle of the night, oftentimes, the early hours of the morning, so you're looking at 1 to 2 o'clock in the a.m. Yeah, man. Yeah, you are very lucky. The air in the room would start to feel very thick, very vibratory, and I would feel a presence enter into the room, but before I could see the presence, I would start to get afraid, and I'd start to get this PTSD type of sense about me and on numerous occasions I would start to see things bleeding through my wall now the things that I would see would depending on the day oftentimes resemble cartoons that I just watched on TV they would oftentimes resemble things that would make me afraid you know blackout afraid actually to the point where I would get so scared in my, in my small body <laughs> that I would pass out and every tactic was used to get me out of bed in a way which would benefit them. Well, I'm not willing to say that's evidential. And here's why. Basically, there's so many explanations out there for this kind of stuff. All sorts of experiences that can give you very vivid hallucinations, uh, vivid experiences, things akin to dreams, uh, things that relate to night terrors, sleep paralysis. The list goes on. And I'm willing to put my money on that far more easily, in a very cynical way, but that's understandable considering the quality of evidence, because there's no real reason I should believe what you say. Aliens have put stuff into your head that were slightly confusing and bizarre, and then you end up working for aliens. Sleep paralysis has been around for centuries and descriptions of the experience are all over ancient folklore. Nightmare. I was held down by these living sort of ribbons that came across me and tightened up around me and, and bound me down. And then of course the aliens filed into the room and levitated me and, and took me out of the room and uh, it was a very bizarre experience. We had a shadow being that would come in from time to time. He literally came in from the etheric plane and would just sit there. Two angelic twins. They would be very thin and dangly. They definitely weren't from this earth. Probably not even from this universe. They reminded me of jellyfish, only if jellyfish could walk. If you could imagine those aliens out of Men in Black, the really thin ones, the hey, kawabanga beings. <laughs> if you were to smash them together with luminescent jellyfish. Everyone else that was around the table would come and go as they pleased. But everyone else that I just mentioned had to be there. It was absolutely mandatory. It wasn't until I started astral projecting that I started to loosen a lot of the shackles on my mind around my memory. It's one time in particular where they came to visit me and as soon as they entered the room, I started to recall so many similar experiences. It was insane. I was walking towards my window. I was like, okay, let's just keep doing what I've always been doing. But one of them, the guy that would constantly feed me suggestions, he caught on. I could tell he was catching on. I could tell that he knew that I was aware of what was happening. And despite his best efforts to keep feeding me info, it just wasn't working and I wasn't reacting the same way, which was just more of a, a red flag that I had become 
awake. I get onto their ship, and I am nervous. I am so nervous. It's obvious that I know what's going on at this point, and people in the room start to have their own conversations subconsciously. Certain members of the Galactic Federation of Light had psychic abilities. They could project thoughts into my head. Um, turns out I was just having sleep paralysis. Okay, you work for aliens who pass on a message that's complete and utter bunk. So, what are they? Space Jehovah's Witnesses? I don't know, I don't know. They come knocking door to door, or bedroom door to bedroom door. They abduct the fuck out of you, and then make you pass on a crazy message. And I, I don't know, maybe it is... <laughs> is that the clue? The, the, the aliens, hmm, uh, they're real, but their message is complete and utter bullshit. And I thought, I'm being abducted. You know, why? Why am I being abducted? What are they doing? Um, turns out I was just having sleep paralysis. When we dream, our brain switches off our ability to move so that we don't injure ourselves acting out those dreams. When we wake up, it switches us back on again. But sometimes the switch is out of sync. And if that weren't terrifying enough, the other symptoms include hallucinations, a feeling of pressure on the chest, and intense fear. Um, but, but the nightmare is an example of a stereotyped hallucination, uh, which has given rise to analogous myths or folk tales all over the world. Uh, but you have some degree of conscious awareness, and your eyes are still able to move, and you can look around the room. Um, it's often a terrifying experience for people that are suffering from it, not only from the paralysis, but because of the hallucinations that often accompany it. The hallucinations vary, but come in three general types. First, the intruder, an evil presence approaching. Second, the incubus, something pressing on your chest, choking or assaulting you. Finally, levitation, the sensation of being lifted off the bed and even transported elsewhere. Put them together and you may have something strikingly familiar to a sleep researcher acquainted with UFO abduction stories. I think all three categories are consistent with what people who report being abducted by aliens experience, um, having a presence in the room, feeling if someone's on top of you, sexually assaulting you. If I remember anything else, I'll be sure to make a new video on this topic. Okay, so subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this one. And if you're interested in astral projecting, I do have a mastery course that I've built over the course of four years, available over on my website, ryancropper.com. He's a spiritual life coach. He uses his videos to get attention. He talks about, oh, he died. Oh, he's always had awareness. Oh, he's been abducted by aliens. Oh, he's had this, etc., etc. As a spiritual life coach, he's trying to sell stuff. He's selling courses, he's selling books. The list goes on of stuff he flogs. It's a living, and yeah, if he manages to fool a few credulous people, I guess that's all part and parcel of the business, isn't it? But that's the real focus. It comes down, in the end, you know, bottom line, it comes down to money. What's that smell? Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. Children of the night.